We can all be helpers. We can be helpers in the way that we relate to each other. I'm asking you to help me right now by making it safe and by feeling a connection with you. When we listen to someone, we give them permission to be themselves. We go deeper than what it is that's on the surface. We, we find out more about what they're feeling and what they're thinking and who they are. Okay, and along with that comes empathy, which is the ability to feel what another person's feeling, to be willing to stand with them, understanding that what they're feeling is something that they can relate to as well. And encouragement is that quiet support that says, I value you, and you can do it. And probably more important than anything else is to see through what it is that can be our, our mask or our, the performance that we put in front of people. That actually we all go through the kinds of insecurities and fears with each other. Uh, and that it's when we see through our performance or the image that we do that we, we find that we can connect. Now, <clears throat> this is a very situational time and place to ask for that help. But these are the very things that we need right from the beginning, right from childhood. When children don't have these needs met, they struggle in their life to try to get them met because these needs are the, are the message to them that they are approved of and they are accepted and they belong. And those three things are so foundational to who we are that if we don't have those things, we do a lot of things. We spend a lot of our life trying to find out who am I? How will people like me? How will people accept me? Like a plant that grows from a seed to become an oak tree, so mankind becomes what we're meant to be. That woman underneath the tree with a red shirt on, she's got the seed in her hand. So the seed is pretty small. But look at that oak tree. Look what the potential is for a human being to become what they're meant to be. And yet... As Carl Jung said, most of us get stuck. Most of us get stuck in that process. And what is it that that means to be stuck? I think it means to feel the fears and the insecurities and the doubts and the unresolved emotions that come from a living a difficult life. As a psychotherapist, I see behind the veil because people come to me to tell me what it is that they're, that they're experiencing. I know that there's a lot of pain and suffering in the world, not just from people who are, are uh, struggling, but from us, from all of us, the people that are in this room, could all tell a story about what makes their life difficult. And it's when we decide to go towards that pain and open ourselves up to see each other in that way and realize that help is what we can give each other. Help is what we all need. And if we didn't get our needs met when we were children, that's our job as adults. That's what we can do for ourselves and for each other. That we have a role in life together as we go along this journey. Now a psychotherapist is trained in doing that particularly when the kinds of things that a person is dealing with represent a burden that they've carried. We call it baggage, emotional baggage. The things that are unresolved that come along in life. If you look at this chart, on the left side is the kind of emotions we feel in the current moment. And on the right side are the, mo are the emotions that get put underneath 
and that we're carrying along with us on a subconscious level. And they permeate up into our behavior because they're there and they're unresolved. So if we are fear-based, it means we approach life with some fear. We look through the lens of our fear. If we're guilt-based, then it means we already feel like we're not good enough. And those things are part of what make us stuck, that keep us from being able to live fully into that oak tree, that person we're meant to be. It's also in our thoughts, negative self-talk, the ways in which we come to believe I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not attractive enough. We undermine our ability to actually be free from these things. Our body holds it too. I can feel it in my body right now, the, the anxiety that comes from standing in front of people and letting them see me. I feel that. So those are the things that can be sorted out, often in, in psychotherapy, but also with friends and family who are open to listening. One of the things I hear in psychotherapy is people say to me, I've never told anyone that before. Or there's no one I can talk to about the kinds of things I'm telling you. So part of what I'm challenging us all to do today is to think about how we can be with each other where that kind of openness liberates us to support each other and rise higher. This model simply puts it visually to say that when we are limited by our shame or our guilt or the pain of our apathy or the tensions of our fears and angers. We're limiting the life force that's meant to come through us. And if we can remove those from our life, we discover that there's a kind of freedom, a kind of openness, a kind of willingness to embrace the here and now because we're not distracted by that. We're not questioning ourselves. We're not wondering, am I good enough? Mi Ling is a great example of a teacher who teaches people to stand up and be willing to be themselves, to go through those fears and those struggles, to face what it is that ultimately represents what we have a right to, to be ourself. Lao Tzu said, at the center of our being, we have the answer. We know who we are, and we know what we want. He's telling us to turn inward, to not be focused externally, which is what we do when, we, when we're trying to belong and fit in, or to be accepted. We're looking outside ourselves, And what the wisdom that he's brought is that the answer is really here. To, to, li to listen to our own self, to minimize or reduce the degree to which we care about what other people think so that we can take our place, we can stand tall and stand strong as who we are. And when we're empowered, we want for ourselves no more nor no less than we want for each other. It's not to be powerful over people or to be diminished in our, in our place in the world. It's to stand in the place where we feel it's our life, it's our time, and that we're in this together. So what does it mean when we get through the log jam of, of these negative thoughts and these, these painful emotions that might be unresolved in our life? I called it a liberation. I called it a discovery of things that are there. There's an appreciation and an awe that comes from living life that way. There's an ability to be in the present and see things that we might not see when we're clouded in our depression. The beauty that's there. The amazing things that are happening every day around us. And a gratitude, a sense of appreciation for all the small things that we have.
We might say that what comes out of that is a, is a kind of a wisdom, a way in which we have life in perspective and that our ability to be calm while the world is not so calm puts us in a place where we can see what's important, and what's, what our priorities are. The other thing I feel is very important is, is while a child doesn't have any doubt about who they are, especially the younger we are, we're just who we are. We play and we're light and we just be who we are. And I think that that's what happens when we pass through the logjam of our limitations and f discover that we're actually free to be who we are. We, we discover that we can play. that we can be spontaneous, that there's a song that runs through our head. The reason I put this slide on is because it reminds me of a song. It's a song called Ripple by the Grateful Dead. And there's a line in that song that I like a lot. It must be no there is a fountain that isn't made by the hands of men. Da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da da da. -da. 